Well, we've got an interesting little bit of screwing around to do here. I'm in Ogden, Utah, heading over to a place called White Clouds. White Clouds is a 3D printing company. And there's, uh, there's 3D printing companies popping up here and there. And you can shoot them files of 3D models that you build on a computer, and they will print them for you out of plastic or some other material right on their 3D printers. 3D printing is this really fun new technology. Well, it's not that new. I, I mean, it's been around for over 20 years, but it's always been experimental and, and highly expensive and just not available to the mainstream. But uh, these days, it's pretty much available to anybody that wants to do it at very affordable rates. And uh, for modelers and, and so on, it's a great thing because you can create model cars, model rockets, model whatever the heck it is you want to build on your computer and then shoot the file over to a company like White Clouds and they'll print it for you. And now you have a model car or a model train or a model rocket or an engine for your car or whatever the heck it is. So this should be fun. Let's go check out White Clouds. I had the chance to tour White Clouds with members of the Utah Model Car Association a really old and fun model car club in Utah. White Clouds does 3D printing on large industrial 3D printers like the one you see here. Now this particular printer is capable of forming parts out of several different kinds of plastics at the same time. As you can see in the image here, there's actually two types of plastics being used. Now some of these printers are even capable of printing in full color. Check out these figures. This is how they came out of the printer, in full color. A lot of these printers are capable of reproducing some very, very fine detail and even open lattice work like this bridge you see here. Now this particular printer is called a Maker Bot, and this type of printer uses molten plastic to form the part. A plastic wire is fed down into the head where it's melted and then the molten plastic is squirted out through a nozzle onto the model where it hardens immediately. These are becoming rather prevalent. Now this printer uses baking soda or something similar to baking soda and it forms the part by squirting cyanoacrylate glue, a similar product to a super glue, into the powder causing the powder to harden. You can see a skull is actually being made here, one thin slice at a time by squirting glue into the powder. Color can be added with this type of printer as well by simply adding a four color inkjet nozzle that adds color as the glue is being sprayed in. You can see that these two heads were printed in full color. In this case, the images are photographic. These are actual photographs of people mapped onto the model. This printer uses ultraviolet catalyzing polymer. It's a gooey honey-like liquid and then an ultraviolet laser is fired into that and that causes the polymer to harden and that produces a part, something like the uh, windmill that you see here. This is a rather old type of printer, I mean old as this technology goes. This has been around for quite a while but it does produce a really nice part with really good detail out of a clear plastic material. The parts need to be baked once they're done because they come out kind of sticky and soft. Look at the very, very fine detail in these plastic models here. These are a very, very small scale architectural model. And you can see that very, very fine detail can be produced this way. Think how fun it would be to do a very small scale railroad entirely on the 3D printer. And these printers can print open lattice works like you see here. They don't have to be solid pieces. The cottage industry people can use this as a prototyping system. These parts here could easily be turned into rubber molds and then cast in polyurethane. While 3D printing's been around for quite a while, it's really taken off recently as prices have really come down.
Well, there you have it. White Clouds 3D printing in Ogden, Utah. I am dying to try this out. I'm going to download some software and download some of the models from their website and see if I can't manipulate them or do something with them and then send those files back to them for printing and then get in the mail a model that I've built in the computer using software. That's just totally cool beyond all belief. This should be a good deal of fun. Now, if you haven't been over to the channel, you should get over to the channel. There's a link right down here that takes you to Toy Man Television here on YouTube. And from there, you can subscribe to the channel. And then that way, you'll be notified every time I post some of this madness to the channel. And you can also go to Facebook and like me on Facebook and there, too. You will be notified whenever I'm doing something or if I get arrested or some, you know, some other random stupid thing were to happen. At any rate, I'm not sure how you found this particular movie on the internet if you're not a subscriber, and I hope you didn't find that boring. And I'll see you here again in one week with yet another great Toy Man adventure. I'll see you then.